Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here at uh, WCR Nation. So what's up? First and foremost, if you're new here, this is your first time watching or listening, what up? Thanks for coming to check us out. Uh, go ahead and watch this episode if you like it or even can tolerate it. Go back and watch uh, the rest of the episodes and uh, let me know what you'd love to see and I will get that uh, recording out to you. And if you are part of the nation, what is up? Nation, what is up? If you haven't yet, go ahead and shoot me your email. Get one of those nation stickers. I'm so behind. We've been just, I mean, tons and tons and tons of people have sent me their addresses. So I'm sorry if it's behind. I'm sorry. But go ahead and email me your address, josh at windowcleaningresource.com. I'll shoot you out a sticker and... Best of all, that makes you part of the nation. So if you are here, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're the reason that I continue to do the show and get to do the show is because of people like you that are faithful watchers and listeners. It's awesome. And like I said, every week, if you are, uh, if you have any type of ideas for any show you like to see, like to hear, shoot me a message via uh, email or text. If you have any ideas, dumb, good, bad, funny, not funny, let me know. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and I am a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource, so if you'd like to give me that virtual high five, place your orders through me. That would be amazing and epic and awesome, and I would love it. My number is 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text, even if you're just saying what's up. I love to hear that. I get dozens of them a week. Uh, texts and emails are saying, what's up, man? Following the podcast. I love it. Thanks for what you're doing. That's huge. That is really, really huge. So thank you for everybody who sends those in. Really do appreciate it. And we're going to be doing a giveaway. If you would like to win the swag, WCR Life swag bag, that is the Ettore pin t-shirt, sticker sheets, the whole nine yards, the whole kit then all you need to do is go ahead and tag WCR Nation, hashtag WCR Nation, anywhere on Facebook, and I'm going to pick a winner every single week. So please do that. Talk about the show, whatever you want. Uh, very much appreciate that. So first and foremost, uh, that's it. Thank you. But anyway, off to the show. This week we are going to be talking... Oh, I'm, I forgot. Shout outs. I'm so sorry. Shout outs this week. First off, I want to say to uh, Mark Carraro, because I screwed his name up last time. So I'm sorry. What up, Mark? Thanks for watching and putting up with me. Um, also to Jonathan uh, Bobowitz. Uh, we went over the last name. Hopefully I got that right. But what up, man? Thanks for watching, listening. Uh, thanks for interacting with me. I really appreciate it. And finally, uh, Kiro Topalov. Topalov? Topalov? Topalov. I, I'm probably butchering him. Sorry. But what up, man? You are epic. I really appreciate it. Uh, super kind words from a lot of guys. Uh, two, if I didn't get you a shout out, send me something again, and I'll make sure to shout you out in next week's episode. Sorry, I forgot those. I don't know. I don't know what's going on today. Sorry. But anyway, we are talking about winter. Now, I would like to, holy cow, it was loud. Sorry about that. But I would like to say um, that if you have... Um, if you have gone through a winter as a window cleaner, then you 100% know what we're talking about. Like, winter changes everything. So, window cleaning and pressure washing, I always said I have to do, like, snowmobile repair or something stupid, right? I, I lived in Wisconsin forever, all of my life, up until oh, two years ago. And uh, Wisconsin is a super duper cold and crappy winter. And that's why I moved, because I couldn't do it anymore. The, like, dreariness and the seasonal depression-y, gross-feeling cold to your bones, living in layers. Ugh. I hate it. But if you're still in an area that's cold, you have to tolerate You have to put up with it. Let's talk about it. Uh, winter is coming. I think that's trademarked, but I said it anyway. Um... It's coming, and there's a lot of things that you have to really do to prepare to, to clean. Now, pressure washing, window cleaning, gutter cleaning, roof cleaning, all the stuff that we do is seasonal. Roof cleaning, bleach hates cold, 
doesn't work real well. You're not going to cover ice on somebody's roof or you're not going to spray the roof down when there's snow. If you're doing uh, house washes, you're not going to freeze the side of their house or the concrete. You're not making sheets of ice for them to fall on. Windows, you know that those frost up and actually ice up. Uh, and it's miserable to do houses that way because you're trying to get your fingers in and get those extra details that you want to do. It's just not happening, and people aren't really calling you anyway. Gutters, of course, in Wisconsin, I want to say, like, by this time, uh, well, we'll say Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving time, gutters stop because as soon as they freeze in there, you have, like, a couple freeze, unfreeze, kind of freeze. As soon as they freeze in there, it's done. You can't do anything about it. So there's this little crappy little window that you have to get everything done by. And um, all of our uh, services are like that. So what can you do? Now, first, if you haven't done route, go back and listen to our, our route episode. But route is amazing. In winter, route is our saving grace, especially in our industry. Route is frequency. Now, you're saying, well, you thought you said you can't clean in the winter. Oh, you can, but it sucks. Now, route is different. Route, you're not going to have to um, detail as much. You're not going to have to be as specific. You're not going to have to be as detail-orientated. Why? Because you're cleaning, practically cleaning windows, and you're going to be going back there in a week, in two weeks, in a month, right? So route is a saving grace because the frequency is still there. If you're going to go and freeze your butt off, how do you do it? Well, there's a couple different ways. One is the um, the alcohol way. You're putting alcohol in your water. I don't like that because it's got to be grounded and you got a big drum, a bomb basically in your shop, warehouse, garage, whatever. I don't like that. So I don't do it that way. But what I do is I use windshield washer fluid. Now, I know. Send me your emails and tell me how bad that is or awful and blah, 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 blah. I get it. I know. But... I have to say, not one employee has ever drank in the solution, and uh, I don't have pets drinking out of it or anything else. But what I do is a 50-50 mix uh, with washer fluid and regular soapy water. If you're using Dawn, GG3, GG4, whatever, E-Cover, Joy, Palm, Olive, whatever, right? Whatever you're using, I do a 50-50 mix. Now... If that freezes, I will go whole uh, 100% solution with a little bit of soap for Glide, but I don't like that. Uh, ours is if you're 50 50 and it freezes out in the field, come back. It's not, that day is, is, is shot. It's so cold. The wind, the frames, the window, the blah, 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 right? So that is my mixture for winter. Now, cleaning route windows in the winter can still suck. And. If everything is freezing up on the window, then you have to go in and do that walk of shame saying, hey, I'm sorry, it's just too cold today to clean, I'll be back. Sorry for how I left your window, there's not much I could do about it. Because when it freezes on there, you can't detail it. It doesn't come out clean. So you don't want it to freeze on the window, but you still want to make that money for that week. Now, if the sun is out, even, well, sometimes on the coldest days, if you got a ripping wind, uh, that glass is so cold that everything's freezing. And you'll see it right away. As you go like this with your mop, you're going to see that that like ice right behind it. If that's happening, yeah, windshield washer fluid, heavy. I soak the scrubber, scrub the window with windshield washer fluid, get it off just so it doesn't, I don't leave a gross window. And then you're out of there. That's at least mine. I know guys clean colder than that. I don't because A, it's miserable for the guys. It's miserable for you, the windows, you're chasing it. They're taking 10 times as long. Yeah. Go go get a cheeseburger. Call it a day. See you guys tomorrow. Um, that's how we do route. But the other thing to think about a route, especially in harder areas that are colder, is the salt um, buildup. The salt on those windows is going to be horrendous because they salt the crap out of sidewalks. It's cheaper for a bag of salt than it is for an insurance claim. That's what we always said when we plowed also. Um, and... It's true. They will go heavy. They don't want somebody to fall. They don't want snow on there. And it looks like an open place of business if the sidewalks are clear. So they're going to go heavy on the salt. When you walk on the salt, brings it up. You're sloshing salty water around. It gets on the windows. Now, winter, I think we drop our kind of um, quality, I guess, 
down to about 80% in the winter. Because if you're chasing every little ounce of salt or cleaning the frames, or blah, they're just going to get just mucked up and gross again. And they're taking 100 times longer. Now, when spring starts coming, you start cleaning again, then you're going to be keeping those windows clean again. But in winter, it's just expected. So don't kill yourself trying to clean route windows to 100% like you always do. It's not going to happen efficiently. It's not going to happen effectively. And, and it's just going to suck. So we go about 80%. Never had anybody complain. Um, if they do, you know, we it's not noticeable. To us as window cleaners, it really is noticeable. But to a normal person looking through a window, it's not bad. But in winter, what is the worst thing that can be on windows? Not salt, not bird poop. It's paint. Like as in uh, I painted Santa on my window to make sure that people come shop here. Window paint sucks. Window paint sucks. Always, always, always add more for window paint. Now, if I'm removing window paint, I'm going to charge twice for mild, three times uh, uh, cost, or even more for paint. Now, if you have paint, now let me rephrase that. So this is not, um, when I remove paint, I'm talking about I'm not going to charge my dollar per side to remove paint. If I'm going to remove paint, I'm going to have to charge 10, 20 bucks a window. So that's more than what residential. So two times residential is kind of what I go for. If it's the whole window, I may even charge more than that. And people understand. But a lot of the times, I'll tell somebody, I'll say, hey, if your window, as I see it's painted, I'm not going to wash that window until after the season's over, whatever it is on the window. But I say, um, if you had a company come in and do this, they are more than likely able to remove it for free because you already paid them to do the window. Uh, for me, you're going to be paying me an extra amount and it's going to suck and it's going to ruin my bucket because now my bucket's full of melted paint and colors. My strip washers are coated and crappy. Uh, frame, it's just, it's a nightmare. So I try to not have to do that and get somebody else to do it. But if you do, make sure to charge for it. Listen, um, if you go to the grocery store, and you buy a bunch of stuff, and then at the very end, you go, oh, that's right, I need this uh, case of soda and two bags of chips. Uh, bad diet in the first place. But if that's what you do, they don't go, oh, I'll just throw that in because you're paying everything else. Like, oh, okay, that's more money. Same thing. If you're going to have to do more services, more work, more anything, you're going to charge, and they're okay with it. I'm telling you right now. This is not, you're not being buddies with them. You are... Uh, also trying to run a business. So charging somebody to do extra work is not a problem at all. Don't be scared to do that, especially this time of year where you're dealing with a lot of BS. Now, in a normal winter window, yes, it's going to take you a little bit longer. It's going to be grosser. Don't overcharge or charge more for that because in the middle of summer when there's no rain or there's no nothing, you're going to be cleaning windows. It evens out throughout the year. But I'm talking about Really, really, really doing almost like a construction clean for uh, paint or decorations or that kind of thing. Um, water will destroy window paint too. So I've done that before. I I personally have botched a window because I, th it was so stupid. I thought that the uh, paint, usually they'll paint on the inside of the window and uh, they'll paint backwards on the window, right? So they layer it up. It's on the inside, not to the elements. I wasn't even paying attention. I thought it was on the inside. It was on the outside. They painted it on the outside of the window. I don't even know why they did. I went like this. Yep, ruined the whole thing. But that's okay. It would have gotten ruined anyway, probably because they painted it on the outside. But uh, I really should, <laughs> I should have like, sped it up at least. But keep in mind, usually it paints on the inside. Paint it backwards so that the elements on the outside don't. But just watch where it is when you're doing a window. Just like a broken window or something, you're going to be looking at the window and really examining it before you clean it. So um, definitely look at that. Window paint sucks. If you see it, bring it up to them right away that they want to talk to the window painter because it's still fresh in their brain. They'll hopefully get it, whatever. And it's just a window you're going to skip. No one cares. You're not going to adjust your price because you're skipping a window. It's the same price. You just don't do a window, especially in route. If I'm charging you $10, right? And now I don't have to do two windows because there's window paint. I'm not going to change my price. I'm just going to keep it the same. It's not that big of a deal. 
But after that is done, you're not worried about how you're cleaning because you're putting solutions in your water. You're not really worried about uh, window paint and the type of windows that you're really dealing with. But you are going to have to worry about how you dress. You're going to have to worry about how your employees dress. Okay, here's the thing, especially in winter. And people, you guys that have done winters, you get it. You have to dress accordingly. You're like, oh yeah, I just dress warm. No, you need to dress so that you can actually have uh, warmth when you're outside, but not sweat your balls off when you're inside, and you need mobility, because what? You, we use our fingers for a lot of things, we uh, get into the corners with the towels and detail and this, and white frames, and if you're wearing these giant mitts, you have no motion, feeling, or anything in those hands, it's just gonna, it's gonna suck. So, here's what I do in the winter. Now, my first winter job I ever did years ago, this is, gosh, 10, 12 something years ago. I remember it was a machine shop and it was the coldest day of the year so far because this was like my first commercial. I just got to get it done though. I got to, you know, I just got to do it. I wore layers to stay warm. I'm like, oh, I'm not even worried about it. I didn't think about the inside of the building being 80 plus degrees because it's a machine shop. So I went in and just sweated. It was miserable, miserable. I lost 30 pounds worth of sweat, I swear. I didn't think about it. I didn't even think about that I'm going to be inside and outside, jumping in the truck, jumping out of the truck, jumping over to the windows on the outside, in the wind, out of the wind, in the sun, out of the sun, in the building, out of the building. You have to kind of dress in layers. Now, if you have uniforms, here's how we would do it. We would have our coat, our uniformed coat on the outside layer of a hoodie because we also had logoed hoodies. And under the logoed hoodie, we would wear a logoed t-shirt. So you see, every layer that I take off, I still look super presentable. I'm not going to be sweaty and gross. I can take something off. I'm going to leave it in the truck because I don't want to make a mess or uh, put it all over in, in the store that I'm cleaning. And I'm not trying to take up a bunch of room. So what happens is that I'm going into the um, building. I take my coat off. I put it in the truck, work truck. And I'm going into the building. Now I have my layer of just a t-shirt and a sweatshirt on. I still look super presentable. I'm on the inside. I'm not worried about really getting terribly hot, awful. I'm not in a coat. I have more mobility. I can move. I really like to set it up that way. Because no matter how you dress, you need to look presentable. And we talked about logos. If you're not logoed and lettered, you don't have to go fancy. T-shirts are cheap, right? I was paying like six bucks a shirt with a logo. Sweatshirts were like 20, 25 bucks. I mean, that's like regular prices, but now I have logos. So get logo to gear because you always want to look presentable. You want everybody to see you cleaning windows, know who you are because it will help you with your image and in the long run. But I dress that way. Uh, I want to make sure the layers are removable. And um, if something gets you know, dirty or salt covered or anything, I can take it off and still look presentable. It's just like having extra shirts in the summer when you are sweating through everything, being able to change a shirt, keep yourself looking presentable because it's your image. It's your company. It's not just you. It's not, hey, that tech looks gross. It's, oh, that company looks gross, right? And I've won bids on guys just looking gross and disgusting and people that have been in the building have complained so much about it that they had to find somebody else. And I got it because... They were disgusting, so it really, really is worth doing. Um, but that gets you to kind of thinking about what you're wearing on your feet and what you're wearing on your hands. Now, talking about feet, this one has always gone back and forth because everybody's a little bit different. I still had guys wear tennis shoes. I hate tennis shoes, sneakers, whatever you call them. I hate them in the winter. Why? They don't keep your feet warm, first and foremost. And your feet are going to be wet because you're stepping in slush, you're stepping in snow, you're getting over those curbs with all the piles. It's just miserable. So I'm going to wear some boots. I personally liked a mid, uh, mid-level mid uh, high work boot, uh, Timberlands, uh, something along those lines, where they were thinly, thinly insulated, but they were high enough that if I stepped in water or snow, I didn't get it over my cuff. And... I didn't uh, have to worry about water because they were waterproof. And I personally 
war, um, uh, thinsulate, uh, insulated socks, just because I like my feet to be toasty and they help absorb uh, if your feet do start sweating. So um, that's what I wore. The other nice thing with a thin boot, not a giant galosh or some sorrels or something, is that you can put the cuff of your pants over your boot and it looks very, very presentable. And you're still not worried about getting slosh and wet and all that other stuff because warm feet, so much better than cold feet. Wet feet in the winter is miserable. If you haven't experienced it, don't. It's like when you're dressed nice going somewhere and you step in that awful puddle in the street. Oh, it's miserable. They got a saying for that in Canada. If you know what it is, comment down below if you're watching this on a video. I can't remember what it's called, but it's awful. It's miserable. So dressing that side of things is really, really important in winter cleaning for sure. Uh, and then what's really, really hot right now is gloves. What kind of gloves to wear? What do you want to have? What do you want to wear? Are you going to wear anything? Are you not going to wear anything? Now, if you've met me in person, I have like eczema hands. I got, they, my hands look gross. They're cracked. They're just, they're bad, right? So I would try to wear some kind of glove because in the winter, that dry, uh, windy, cold cracks my hands even worse. So I'd always have something on. Now, I personally... I would wear mechanics gloves and uh, people go, what? Those aren't even waterproof. They're not, but I'm not getting my hands super wet. Um, I also have worn the Kanai gloves. Um, I like those, the seal skins. Uh, those are really nice. Um, there's a few of them that I really like. Now, there are bigger ones. The Alaska glove, The uh, there's been a couple of them that we've even had that don't have any more. Those bigger gloves, a little bit more of a pain in the butt, in my opinion, because you can't get your fingers in the corners, detail, and that type of thing. You gotta think of mobility. So if you're gonna wear even a Kanai glove that is like, uh, you know, it's waterproof, it's got uh, fleece on the inside, it's a great, great glove, still mobile, but a good glove. That's if you're one of those guys that rings the the T-bar out, if you dunk your hand in the in the water, anything like that. If you plan on getting those super wet, you want to have a waterproof glove. Now, I hate nothing more in this world other than internet trolls. I don't hate anything in this world more than neoprene. I hate neoprene. It's awful. It stinks. It your sweat sits ugh. Bleh. I hate, 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 hate neoprene. Some people really like neoprene. I hate it. Now, a fleece-lined neoprene takes care of the problem of why I hate neoprene, right? But between every job, I'm going to throw my gloves up on my dash, put them uh, with my uh, uh, heat coming out uh, defrost, and uh, I am put the open end towards the windshield because that's where the, wind come, or the heat comes out, and I'm going to dry them every time. Not only is it nice to have warm gloves on, when you get to a job, but it keeps them dry. It keeps them from getting gross and cold and sweaty. And I mean, you remember you're working in full gear. You're going to be hot. You are going to be sweaty a little bit. And if you're wearing something that doesn't breathe like a standard neoprene glove, you need to dry those out. So keep that in mind. And again, sales plug. If you want any type of gloves, check us out. Shop window cleaning resource. Com. We've got a ton of gloves. Give me a call when you're ready to order. We'll put it in. But anyway, I also uh, wear the mechanics and have mechanics for all my guys. If they want a fancier glove, I'll buy it for them. Uh, they get to search, uh, you know, the site itself. If they find a glove they want, uh, definitely buy it. Because the happier an employee is to work in the cold, cruddy weather, the better off everything is. They know they need to work, but that's the worst part of the year. I mean, sometimes it can be worse than those hot, hot, hot days, so stinks so keep that kind of in your brain but traditional versus regular is there a way to even water feed in the freezing cold and i'm gonna go on record saying no uh, here it is right send me all your messages and tell me what you do to make it work it sucks don't do it why you're just pumping water not only does the water have to be on if you're getting it from somewhere uh we've done it before in the winter time but we had a, a heated uh, warehouse where we pull our vehicles into there's water and everything so our water is uh room temperature when we go out somewhere so we're using 
not heated water, but not outside water. You have to make sure that there's spigots on. You have to uh, not leave puddles. You have to, you know, make sure your machine doesn't freeze and everything else that goes with it. It's just a pain in the ass. Don't, 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 even, don't even bother with doing it. Stick to traditional in winter. Not only can you add solutions to it, it won't freeze. It's easier to move. You're not leaving puddles for people to slip in. It's just so much better. And if you are using a RODI system, if that membrane expands because of that water that's in there, you've trashed the membrane. You're, you're 350 bucks out the drain, even more if you're using some of the other systems, right? You don't want to do that. It's a very expensive uh, learning experience. So don't do that. Also, in the spring, some of our most um, most sold things, we find it all the time, is somebody's system somewhere froze, crap, it froze, and broke a housing. We replaced so many housings in spring, and it's just all because something froze a little bit, expanded when it wasn't supposed to expand, and there you are. You're, you're SOL, and now you have to buy a new housing. Once your system leaks from a housing crack or something, it's completely useless until you fix that. So keep that in mind also um can you clean in the snow yeah yeah we do all the time in the snow now remember if it's snowing it's not terribly cold because if it's really really cold it's not going to be snowing snow you get more at that like 30 degree mark right plus nugget of that type of thing we clean in the snow a lot now snow is even easier to clean in than rain uh, rain, you can't tell what's the rain water and what's your water when you're trying to detail. It's miserable. I don't do it. I know a lot of guys who do. I don't clean in rain. Uh, snow, on the other hand, I can see it's a flake of snow. And if it's cold enough, it's not even melting on the glass. So um, snow, perfectly fine to do it. And you're going to get a lot of weird looks of people going, you're cleaning the windows in the snow? Yeah, I am. Because I got to get it done. <laughs> but no, snow is technically, um, you know, one of those things that I don't even have come up as uh, questionable. Now, if it's just dumping blizzard on you, I don't want the trucks on the road anyway. I don't want my guys to have to drive through that crap and everybody's still trying to shovel. You're in people's way. You're walking. this. But if it's just flurries or light snow, yeah, clean in the snow. Not, not a problem in my opinion. Now, in the pressure washing side, I did have at one point, we used to do fleet. Now, if you know what a fleet cleaning is, semis and things like that, you know you got to use heat and you're running portable water. Now, when you're carrying 550 gallons of water, it's not going to freeze that easy. But we've had lines freeze. We've cleaned uh, freezers. We've done giant walk-in freezers where our lines get a little stiff, but motion of water keeps it from freezing. That type of thing may be all right. Now, if you're doing fleet cleaning... A, welcome to the podcast about window cleaning, but pressure washing, if you guys are doing fleet cleaning, just remember this, that the overnight temperatures cannot be below freezing. And the reason is, is that that water, there's so much water that you're putting on the ground that even if it stays, you know, melted during the day, if the temperatures, if the sun goes down, now it's not evaporating, now you're building ice. Ice sucks in a truck lot. They're going to hate you. They're going to hate you. And you're going to lose that account. So keep that in mind if you're doing fleet don't do it in the cold. Just don't do it. And most importantly, when thinking of winter, keep this in mind. Spring is coming. <laughs> Spring is coming, right? Winter sucks. And the best thing about winter is that eventually it will end. Uh, if you want, move to North Carolina. It's amazing, right? This is the coldest it's been in like a year and it's like 50. It's, I mean, maybe not coldest in a year, but you know. It, uh, the winters here are amazing, and uh, if it does happen to snow, which our average snowfall is like three inches a year, if it does snow, the town loses its mind, places are closed for like a week. The restaurants even close because of um, the thought of snow. Like, it'd be blue skies and sunny in like 60, but possible snow, they're closing the store. It's just amazing. So, either deal with winter, <laughs> go make some money on route, or move south. There's... Tons of room. When you, when you get smart and uh, want to move out of the cold, you can certainly do that. Remember, snow is fun to play in, not live in. That, that's my theory. But anyway, that's my time for this week. Hey, listen, I really do appreciate it. I'm going to give you my number one more time. If you have any type of um, uh, window cleaning supplies, pressure washing supplies, anything you need, let me know. And I would love to order it for you. 
Uh, we have competitions also in-house for going back and forth with other salesmen, and I want to win. So my number, 862-312-2026. Listen, shoot me a text, call me, whatever you want. We're going to make it uh, happen if you want to order something, or if you just want to say what's up, man. Appreciate the show. Love that. Love it. It's my best part of my day. So let me know. Also, if you want a sticker, give me your address, josh at window cleaning resource.com and if you want the wcr life swag bag go ahead and hashtag wcr life anywhere on facebook we'll find it make it awesome and uh, uh we'll pick a winner from that one too so awesome thanks again for watching hopefully you're part of the nation and hopefully uh your winter is not 